In this video, we'll cover how to create zip files in C-sharp and VB.net. Then we'll extract and read the contents of a zip file and edit it by adding and removing zip file entries. Hey guys and welcome to Azul Coding. To save time, I've gone ahead and set up the UI controls I need, and I'll talk you through those in just a minute. But you can of course design your application however you like. All the code in the video is available from the link in the description down below. I'll be writing this in C-sharp, but there's a VB.net translation available too. Let's get the application set up first of all. I'm using WPF to give us a UI that'll help us see the contents of the zip file, but you can easily write most of this functionality in a console app if you prefer. I've got some buttons along the bottom of the window, a create button to make a new zip file from a given directory, an extract button to take an existing zip file and extract it to a folder. And then I've got an open button to load in the contents of a zip file into the app, with some options to add more files and save the resulting zip file. I've also got an items control here that will display the list of entries in the zip file, and if we right click on one, we'd be able to remove it from the list. Let's go to the code behind. I've gone ahead and added in a dictionary that will map each zip file entry to the data that the file holds in the form of a byte array, and also an observable collection that acts as a data source for our items control. Down below are some dialog boxes, one for selecting a range of files, one for selecting a zip file, and a save file dialog to save the resulting zip file. I've also added in a folder browser for when we want to select a folder to compress to a zip file. And to add this in your project, we'll need to go to Tools in Visual Studio, NuGet Package Manager, and then manage NuGet packages for solution. Make sure you've installed the Windows API Codepack Shell plugin here. Let's start off by creating and extracting zip files. We'll first need to assign our observable collection to the item source property of the items control, so that when we update the collection, the UI will also update automatically. I've added in some event handlers for each of the buttons below, but let's focus on the create button first. When the user selects a folder using the folder browser, we'll get the file name, And to get rid of that null reference warning, we can just add this on the end. For this example, we'll take the folder the user has selected and compress it to a zip file in the container folder. We can get the parent directory like this, and then we're able to combine the parent directory with any file name we like. To create a zip file, we'll simply use the create from directory function, passing it the selected folder and the file name for the zip. And we can also select a compression level if we wanted. You might have noticed that when you create a zip folder in File Explorer, it will add it as a subfolder by default. If we just wanted to add the containing files in the top level, we can set this to false. Then we'll show a message box and test it out. If I click on Create and give it a folder with some files in, check in File Explorer, and there we are, the zip contains all the files from that folder. So we've created a zip file, but now let's extract one in the Extract button event handler. When the user selects a zip file, we'll get the name, parent directory as before, and the folder to extract the files to, calling it Extracted for now. We'll create that directory and use the Extracted Directory function, passing it the zip file and the target folder. Let's give it a go. And as you can see, the files that I just compressed have now been extracted. Let's now read the contents of a zip file and update the list in the UI. We'll first clear anything in these two variables. And then once the user selects a zip file, we'll use zipfile.open and pass it in the file name. You can also choose which mode to open the zip file in. If you're updating the zip file straight away, you should choose update. But since we're just reading the file for now, I'll set it to read. We can then loop through the entries in the resulting zip archive, using a stream to essentially convert the file to a byte array so that we can store it in memory. I'll then update our dictionary, mapping the file names to the byte arrays, and of course the observable collection. Let's add a breakpoint on this line and test it out. Select an zip file from earlier. If I hover over the zip archive entry, you're able to see other properties such as the compressed length, uncompressed length, last write time, and so on. So feel free to use these in your app. 
but if we continue, the UI has been updated. I've also got a zip file with a subfolder in it, and if I open that, you can see that the subfolder name is included here too. Let's finish off by editing the contents of the zip file and saving it. In the Add Files button event listener, when the user selects one or more files from the browser, we'll loop through the files getting the relative file name. And then we can use a stream as before to load each file into a byte array. If the user adds a file that has a name already included in the contents, we'll simply overwrite it like so. And if it's a new name, we'll add it to the dictionary and observable collection. And while we're here, let's add in the functionality for the remove menu item, getting the file name to remove like so. Let's test out adding and removing files. If I open up zip file.zip and add in some other files, this seems to work as expected. Let's remove one of these by right clicking on it as well. Now we just need to save the contents in memory to a zip file. So in the save button event listener, we'll get the file name the user has chosen from the save file dialog and create a new file stream and zip archive. We're then going to loop through the dictionary where the key is the file name and the value is the byte array, representing the data in the file. And as before, you can set the compression level if you like. We'll use a binary writer with the zip archive entry to write the entry to the zip file. And as you might expect, if the file name contains a subfolder, that will be written to a subfolder in the zip file as intended. Let's add a quick message box down here and test it all out. Open in the subfolder.zip file this time. Let's say I want to remove one of these files. And there we are, that's been saved. If you're looking for an example app, I've created a suite of WPF desktop apps that are all open source. I've also made a language insight built with Eleventy that's 100% free. Check them both out in the description down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest from Azul Coding. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.